Hi folks, welcome to part two of the layout uh, tutorial. Again, taking away some lessons that we uh, learned at the Barzi Summer Bash from Tom Lipton's competition. In part one, we made our fixture plate here, which replicates, uh, sort of replicates Tom's jig to determine if it was a, a good layout or not. And here was the one that we did. This was our third try. We had a lot of hands-on help from Tom, uh, which is what I want to go over today. So we've got a little piece of uh, actually sheet aluminum. I didn't have any sheet uh, metal laying around and tools are very important here. We've got a set of dividers which I think of this as more of a compass I think but uh, dividers is the right term. Sharp point really important. We even noticed that some of the dividers that were laying around at the Barzi Summer Bash um, just they were different in quality. Some of them had different sharpness of points. Some of them seemed to move on you. That really really matters. Um, all the links for these tools are in the description below. Many of them are kickback links where we make a buck, doesn't cost you anything. Um, but definitely, these are not expensive. I think these are like six or seven dollars. So uh, I would say if you don't have a good set, pick them up. To make those sharp, we used a set of these diamond laps. I would also really recommend owning a set of these. They're very handy for a lot of things. We'll go over that in a second. You need some sort of magnification. Some guys have it built into their eyeglasses. Uh, Tom it was recommending using these. Uh, I also have this little 10x loop. This is like a few bucks. Um, and we also, we're not going to use it in today's video, but these are great. This is an um, optical center finder, which, uh, which is phenomenal. What you do is you look through this piece here. It has an actual little scope or like a reticle on it. You put that over your hole. It's magnified. And then you pull it out and swap, let it stay in place and swap it with the punch. And then you punch it down very easy to be accurate. Um, cheating though for the purposes of this video, so we're not going to use that. S regular type center punch, we're going to use this almost like a scribe as a type of prick punch. Uh, and then finally a standard machinist ruler. So let's start off, I'll get a sharpie here. I'm, I've got the door open which is going to affect the lighting a little, but I want the natural sunlight uh, really helps. So I'm just going to mark the center here, three inches. Yeah, that's actually pretty close. Now I'm going to use my scribe and just kind of make a point and I'm going to feel that point with my with my dividers. Feels good. Uh, it's not wide. I'm not moving around, but it's got a real point to it. Now we know it's a four inch radius, so we need to set these to two inches apart. And <laughs> I did this wrong the first time. You don't go from here to two. You go from one to three. And if you, if you notice, it will click in when you get on a line. And we're obviously wide here, so we're going to tighten in. And we should be able to tighten in until we feel it kind of drop in. Now, you know, I didn't even think about this. You could probably even use the magnification to help. Now, what you want to do, you want to rock back and forth. Now, I'm rocking back and forth by holding these. That's not the right way to do it in the end, but it's easier for me now. So, see, I'm in one point, and I move, rock it back over, lift up, and I'm still in that point. Now, the way to do it to really check is not to be manhandling it, but to do it from the top. Oh, I'm nervous to do this on camera. I really hope it works. But uh, you should have confidence. And you know what? We're in there. Um, now, before I go too far, actually, I'm supposed to show how, this is how Tom did this, which I thought was, was smart, which is to sharpen up these points. And you want, them, you want them sharp. He held the lap on a table like this. Let's see if we can see that. Yeah. And ran it around. So you open the drawer and I can stick the, dividers inside of it. And I'll tell you, it didn't take very long at all to get a mediocre file uh, up, to, up to pretty good standards. And it, and it helped. So that's good there, but there's different grades in these in this little diamond lap kit if you want to play around with that. Okay, let's check our trying to keep the camera focused, so I figured I'd leave the plate on the same position. 
See that? We're definitely not in the groove right now. We're too wide. Okay, I'm comfortable with that. Okay, dividers are set. We've got our center point. Okay, we're in there. Now hold the top. Try to keep them straight up. The more you bend them down, the, the more you're gonna change the radius. Now, if you can make a deep line, the next steps will be a little easier. I, I can't do that. Anytime I really gouge in, I lose accuracy, and that's unacceptable. So what I ended up doing was making more of a visual line, which is what you're really seeing right here, and, and relying on magnification and not the groove. And it's okay to go around a few more times because you should not see two different lines. It should stay on zero. And if it doesn't, you either got too wide a center hole or your dividers are moving. It's a six bolt hole pattern, which means the radius is the same as a chord. So welcome to high school uh, geometry again. A chord is the distance between two points on the circle. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find the, a point. Now here, can I pick that up? I can't, so I'm actually going to put these down and I'm going to pick that up with the scribe as a prick punch and just pick a point, put my cool glasses on here. And that looks great. Um, I'm going to use the 10x loop though, it's a little bit better. Oh man, yeah, now that is awesome. I can see that that point is just smack dab in the middle of that line and yes, there is a uh, there is a difference. You can see, you can see when it's one way or the other. And the, one of the big takeaways I learned from Tom is you can move the point. If the point's a little bit left or right or inside or outside, you can take the sharp scribe point and you can push and you can move that point. Now, within a limit, and the more you move it, the more risk you've got that you're gonna have a hole that's gonna wobble when you put the dividers in it, but pretty cool. So now I should be able to pick that hole up. I can, it's nice and solid. I'm going to make two marks, one on this side and one over here. They're faint, but that's okay. If they were deeper, you could actually pick them up more in the groove with the tool. I kind of can, so that, that might be good. And the same thing over here. Uh, but this is where people will go wrong. They think, oh, I'm pretty close. And pretty close is not anywhere close to acceptable. Yeah, I, well, wow, I'm getting better at this, I guess. Um, I like that one. Okay, so that one is definitely a few thou inside. So I, normally I would move the workpiece. I'm trying to keep it in focus. So. We just do this and kind of push over. God, that's cool. You literally move that point over. That's awesome. Okay, keep going. Again, find your point. Feels good. You know, I'm in the habit of holding the legs. That's probably a bad idea because that's how you're going to move uh, your dividers. So don't do that. But we're going to do a test that Tom showed us that's gonna help us figure out whether we're good to go or not. Getting a little bit better scribing out of them right now, which is nice. Yeah, I could pick that hole up easier, although I can see it's actually a little off. Okay, I like that one. Make it a little deeper and commit to it. You know, maybe it's a hair outside, so same thing. Okay, and this one, yeah, just push it out of hair. Now, obviously, the, dif the difference between your, your punch hole diameter and the pins is what determines how accurate you have to be, but darn it, I want this thing to be real accurate. Okay, last one, what we do is we sweep it both ways. We sweep it that direction, and then we should intersect perfectly, and we do. Well, do we? Yeah, I'd say we do. Well, 
maybe we're a few thou out. So let's take a look here. Let's go back. You do see we're a little bit wide. Are we? Yep, so come in. Oh man, it wasn't much. And we're not far off on this hole. Okay, that's back in now. Let's take a look. This was our first hole. I like that one. I like that one. Because this is what happens. If you don't pay attention, your error will compound. And you'll be real far. I mean, there were people who that did this that thought, well, we're good. And let me tell you, they were pretty far off. Those feel good. Let's maybe they moved on the very end here. Honestly, it looks the same. I'm very I'm being very critical, but yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe I'm just um, maybe it is good. We'll find out. Yeah, you know what? I think it was good. I'm sorry. Moving the piece around is really important. I'm trying to do this so that you guys can see as much as possible. Yeah, that 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 hole is good. Center punching now, and this is important. You want to center punch with a nice, you know, sharp point, and you want to just you feel your punch in the tit, in the whatever you call it, and one hit, not too hard, straight up and down, folks. I did not have on safety glasses, and that's a big no-no, folks. Big no-no. Okay. And don't take, you know, even though this looks like it's just a get-it-done process, you can really screw the thing up here. You can punch too hard. You can punch it in too much of, a, of an angle. You cannot have your punch in the hole correctly. Okay, six holes, over to the punch. We're using this Heinrich bench punch. The ones that we used at Tom's were these little handheld types. They're very inexpensive and much, much pr better than using uh, drills, especially in sheet metal. So I'd recommend picking one up. Now this is probably the easier part um, in terms of not screwing it up. But basically, all you got to do, have the part right side up, is let your punch down enough that you can find the center tit like that and then just a nice clean punch don't manhandle the part let it kind of float and self level now that hole was barely deep enough that one's better see how it kind of clicks in there there's just no question about it and it doesn't move so i have confidence that that hole was good the first one should be good too but that's good When you wiggle it, you can feel how sometimes your punch pin in the hole can kind of walk a little, and then you realize kind of where center is. I'm not trying to overemphasize this or psych anybody out, but again, it was really amazing to see how many people didn't uh, did not get this done. Okay, that hole is just not deep enough. Be right back. There we go. Okay, there's our pull pattern. Let's go see if uh, we passed. Okay, honor system, I swear I have not tried this out yet. Ha <laughs> ha look at that. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You can see how it just goes right on. 
Now, in fairness, I did do one before the video just to practice again, and it wasn't as good. And you can see, when you move it over the holes, it goes down, but it kind of bind. It, you can kind of bind it a little. See how I can kind of pick it up. And I'll tell you, man, just a few thou. Remember, a human hair or sheet of paper is about four thousands. Um, you can just kind of feel how it's clunky. This one was much better. That's great. There's just there's no hiding when you do this. That's what's cool about it. Oh, I love it. So pretty cool, right, folks? I think that's really satisfying. I really want to thank Tom. If you don't know Tom's channel, Ox Tools, check it out in one of these corners. There's a YouTube card link over to his channel, but absolutely check it out and subscribe. Tom's a great machinist, a great fabricator, very much a renaissance man when it comes to all sorts of metalworking. He has a great channel. I'm looking forward, hopefully, to going out to see his shop for his open house. Hopefully, he does one next year in the I think, San Francisco Bay Area. Tom, thank you for taking the time to help so many folks at the Bars Z Summer Bash. Uh, one of the things I like about Tom is even though he knows a lot, he doesn't, uh, you know, it's not one of those guys who wants to keep all the knowledge inside. He sh shared and helped out with a lot of folks and, uh, again, helped me figure out how to do all this stuff. To recap, you know, rock your dividers between two, you know, the one inch and the three inch to get a two inch radius. And then you be careful when you, you know, use the top to make your scribe marks. Use magnification to make sure you're on. Use a small prick puncher or scribe to start your hole, check it. You can move that hole around, then you can push in a little bit more, and then when you center punch it, one tap straight up and down. You don't want it too wide or else it'll walk when you're actually going to punch the hole through. Folks, try this at home. Let me know how you go. Uh, maybe we'll do something like this at the open house that we're hopefully going to have next uh, summer or May or something because I think it's a lot of fun. I was trying to think how can we do this and have folks send in their pieces, but uh, I'm still thinking about it. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, folks, take care. See you soon.